Hey YouTube, so today you've probably just seen on that picture or the little video, I'm going to make an apple from Apple. So I've got an apple log here, which is pretty rough uh, in a log, which is fine. It's been sealed both ends for a long time and I've had it in the workshop for a couple of years now, actually. Um, I made out of its brother piece, I made the apple goblet that you guys have seen, if you've looked at all my videos, that is. So this one I'm going to make, I want to make a pedestal, so a bit of a pedestal first, and then I want to make a stem coming up with an apple on top and a lidded apple at that. Uh, so it's a lidded box, but also like a like an art piece. Um, I'm a bit gutted here that I've got a big chunk of um, the bark that's blown off, but I'm, I'm aiming to take a little bit off the bottom of here anyway, and then the pedestal is going to be about that big. So, uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame, really. I'm going to get the wire brush and wire brush as much as I can off of all this to get rid of any anything that's loose because there's lots and lots of bits that are flying off. Um, like that look. And then what I want to do is seal up these great big splits because I've got a few splits in here as well. I want to try and seal all this up so that hopefully it all stays in one piece and doesn't all come flying off. But we'll see, see what happens. I'll get the wire rush and we'll get cracking on. Unfortunately, I'm not quite as lucky as Phil Anderson from Shady Acres, and I don't have a Sando Flex that he has. I'll put him in the uh, top of the link because this is right up his street. This is um, doing, uh, you know, rustic looking. He loves that, and he's definitely the master of doing. Things that people go, oh, that shouldn't be on a lathe. You shouldn't be putting that on a lathe. And he just goes, well, if it goes, if it fits, it'll spin. You just got to respect what you're doing and be careful. I also have Little Miss in the workshop today. Um, she's working on her car again, a little car that she's making. Only a model car, but she's making it out of wood. Yeah, you can still use it. Yeah. You are being noisy, but it's okay. Oh my god, that bit of bark's gonna come off. Right, just got a bit of cardboard just protect my lathe. Because I can guarantee I'm about to make a mess. Oh, pretty good fit actually. Fits in there a treat. Right. And once that's dried, then we can um, we can super glue up any big cracks we've got. You can definitely tell which bits you've done, which bits you haven't. It's all brown. Yeah. yeah. So this brake's engaged. All right, that's 100, 250, 300, 350, 450, 500 safe. 550, we're just starting to get a bit of wobble. Let's start at 550 then. Let's see what mess we can make.
if you turn it around and get it mounted up into there. Right, that is well and truly tight. Bitten into the loads. So now what we're going to do is decide how much of this we can keep. I'd love to keep all this foot here, but it's just I just can't. Run at three hundred. Okay, maybe it's not. Hold on a minute. Let's make sure that's out of the way inside first. So we're going on this edge anyway. So just drive it to the centre. Welcome to the normal noise that we get. Weird. Oh wow. Wow. Lots of filling in to do because that's cracked to bugger it. That's beautiful though. Oh, it's also cracked to God knows what. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Alright, no good me talking about it. Let's get on with it. With the eyeballs and everything. Now start filling. Oh, and I'll just put my fingers where I shouldn't have done. Which really isn't unusual for me. Oh, it's getting right on my nose. All right, so it's logo burning time. I'm not quite sure what happened. I thought you guys were recording, but dummy here clearly didn't hit the record button. That'd be me. Um, and you weren't recording. So what I've done is just sanded up all that base um, to 400 grit again, after filling all the cracks with the um, uh, with the super glue. I can't get my words out today. So I filled all the cracks and all the splits and everything with super glue and with sawdust as well, fine sawdust. 
which is what I do on all of my jobs. I don't like to leave the cracks too much. And then we're just going to heat up the branding iron and put my logo in there. Put it in. I think, I think that should be up enough. So we won't know until we stick it on. All right. Nice and straight. Let's have it. He's still leaking. What, the air gun? Mm. The air hose, yeah. Alright. Well, definitely not as hot as it was when I did the apple goblet, because that's set on fire. Ah, but it's come out okay. So, so far, we've got a very shiny, nice sealed and filled all the cracks bit of log. But yet to make anything decent out of it. Okay, so that's been sat there overnight. Um, didn't get a chance to get back on it, unfortunately. Uh, it's lovely and, lovely and shiny. It's really come up quite nice, I guess. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it around and uh, work out how much of this box is going to be staying on. Hopefully a lot of it, but I'm not quite sure yet. That's one and truly chucked up. We'll get that spinning. Oh, let's we'll start making chips. Apple chips. Take this edge away here. Gonna get this shaped up pretty quickly, just a rough shape, and then we'll go from there.
Oh, it serves so hot, that is, that's hot. Bring you guys around to the end so you can see what I'm doing. And we start with a racket. So, the plan is, I only want a little lip, so, about there. Not even that thin than that, I think. I'm going to stick the parting tool in there. Okay, right, let's see if that fits the apple. Close, with no cigar. This close, eh? But not quite. I can see something that's gonna stuff us up a little bit. That split there needs super glue in before we go forcing it on because that'll crack. Oh, that is absolutely perfect. It's just started to get too tight there. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Sand in time. Right, okay, sand in time. So what we do with sanding is we've got the drill, we've got the soft pad, which is relatively soft, and then we have the soft foam head that goes on top of there. It's a bit ripped up, but it's okay. That's super soft then, so the whole thing can contour around. I like using the soft head on contoured stuff like this, obviously, because it's much easier. Um, but with a small little um, lid like this, we'll do it all by hand. So we'll use the drill to do the uh, lid part or the closing part of the lid. Um, but we won't really use it for much else. So then sanding grit wise, we've got Abronet cloth at 120 grit if I need it. Most of the time I do just my sanding pads. So on the sanding pads we have a 180, 
a 240, a 320, a 400, a 600, and then an 800, depending on how bad my day is. So, and then after that, we use the sanding sealer, which is your um, Chestnut Products sanding sealer, which I'll grab you right now. So we use the chestnut sanding sealer. And then after that, we then go on to Yorkshire grit. Normal one. And then we go on to the Yorkshire grit microfine. And then when we're finished completely, we put the microcrystalline wax on it, which I will show you guys now. I'll take you through perhaps maybe the 120 sanding stage and then the 800 sanding stage. Because there's no point in you seeing all of them, you'll only be bored. So unfortunately, now comes the noisy part. We have to get the big extractor on. Now you guys can actually finally hear me. So that's sanded up to 800 grit now. Feels lovely and smooth. There we go. And what we'll do now is get Yorkshire grit on it, or sanding seal on it first. And Yorkshire grit on it. So the cellulose sanding sealer, which you've already seen, because I've just shown you it. Especially when it feels that smooth. Um, it's 
time to put the Yorkshire grip onto the apple. Sounds a bit weird using Yorkshire grip on an apple. It wants to be a shiny apple, doesn't it? Right. So what we're going to do with that is um, we've got a piece of tissue. Rip a little bit off. It's not waste tissue. And we get some Yorkshire grip, quite a bit, because we're not tight. And then just simply rub it in to start with. Yorkshire grit is like a sandpaper or sanding paste. You can hear it sounds like I'm going over it with fine grit sandpaper, which technically that's what it is because it's got aggregates in it. Um, and those aggregates break down as you sand it. Um, they break down and get finer and finer and finer when they knock into each other and get warmer as well but it's also got loads and loads of different waxes in there to protect the wood which is good for the wood obviously right let's go okay let's not go it's blimmin' lays right 350 rpm so not crazy fast uh scotch bright there i'm going to speed her up 600 rpm we're not working on a massively wide piece so the rpms need to be higher because the wood turns slower in the middle 1100 rpm now all right now we're going to come back down I just want to turn it off to see, make sure we've got rid of most of the mark. Yeah. Same kind of process, bit of tissue, microfine, rub it on, sand it in and buff it off. So you guys don't need to see that. I'll bring you back once it's done. So there you go guys. That's that polished up with the microfine Yorkshire grip. You can't really see the profile. It comes around to a point because it goes in and round. And it comes around to a point because I need to be able to drill in the center there. And I've got this piece here really thin, which is a bit gutting. Uh, I went a bit happy with the gouge. So it's now time to use the microcrystalline from Chestnut Products. It's food safe and it's really, really good. It's uh, water resistant, not waterproof, water resistant. So all the vases and things that I get to make, actually you can't put water in them. They have to be for dry flowers, unfortunately. Um, which, yeah, I need to change out soon. I need to get some resin and do some resin coating, which um, kind of looking forward to and kind of not because then all of my resin ideas have buggered up so far. So with this stuff, it looks like that on the inside wax it's um basically uh high high, high temperature wax so you got to you got to get it spinning fast get some heat into there um it's called like friction polish so start off with though we just rub it into the workpiece i like to rub it in in, in the in directions that the lathe will not be spinning in um because then if anything you get a build up anywhere you're crossing the lines a bit like sanding i'll just put a little bit on that edge which unfortunately has to go the same way obviously right now that needs to be left for 20 minutes so i don't know whether you guys can see it on there but leave for 20 minutes and then it can be basically polished. 20 minutes later, let's crack on. So nice clean bit of tissue there, cleanish fingers. That's as clean as they're gonna get after doing the welding and metal work I've been doing for the past couple of days. So we'll get this turned up. 500, 600 RPM, go 700 to start with. 
You can feel it's quite grippy. If my crystalline wax starts to heat up, it becomes softer. And then uh, you can just see the yellowing on the cloth, maybe. That's the wax coming off. And you get it up to 1200 RPM here. Yeah, that's lovely. It's super shiny. Oh yeah, that feels nice as well. It's got that nice feel to it, so I'm happy with that. Right. Open it up. Full resistance. Daddy. Hold on a minute. Little miss is shouting me as usual whilst I'm recording. Perfect timing. Sorry, YouTubers. Sorry, YouTubers. Yeah, no, I think so too. All right, back in a minute when I've sorted out a little miss. <laughs> 